Let me start this video off by saying that I really like my Nintendo Switch. I do like it a lot. I play a lot of uh, games on it. I think it's a great RPG machine, to be honest with you. Um, and I've been playing some Final Fantasy XII on it. It's honestly one of my favorite ways to have played that game, you know, to be able to take it anywhere, that, that grind fest of an amazing Final Fantasy game at times. It's fun. It's, it's, it's a good time for me, and I enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a solid way to play it. And aside from Final Fantasy XII, I played tons of, you know, obviously Breath of the Wild when that was the only game that was really playable on the Switch. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've played a decent amount of my backlog on it, I guess you could say. It's whatever. It's, it's a decent system. But nowadays, I feel like the Nintendo Switch is, is sort of being treated like the uh, the second banana or something, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, and I, I kind of have to talk about it a little bit. When the Switch first came out, it was obviously an underpowered system, and it still is. You know, it, it's not the most powerful of consoles out there. When it came out competing against the big boys, it, it can't stand up. It really can't. Four gigs of RAM, uh, NVIDIA Tegra uh, chipset that was already outdated when it came out in comparison to its counterparts, and a CPU that, well, it, it's just not handling any modern games, let's be real. It was a point of contention. But you know what? There were some big miracle pieces that came out. Doom. Uh, which is a game that ran on PS4, Xbox One, very good looking game, I, I think personally held up pretty well on the Switch. You know, yeah, it looks fuzzier, yeah, it runs at 30 frames per second, but, you know, I, I was still impressed by what Panic Button had done with that game, and I gave it support, I played all the way through it, even 100%ed it, actually, and, you know, I don't regret it. Fine, fine, fine experience. But lately, three games have come out that have absolutely left me pretty tilted, all coming out in pretty rapid succession within one another. Now, we've gone from PS4, Xbox One comparative titles to PS3, 360 era titles. And I'm not counting indie games on the Switch because games like Stardew Valley, uh, Katana Zero, they don't take a lot of processing power to run. Yeah, they're on PS4. Yeah, they're current generation titles. But let's be fucking real here. Running Hotline Miami, running Stardew Valley, running the odd and end indie game isn't that hard to do on the Switch to begin with. So I'm really not going to count it. I like Darkest Dungeon, but it ain't the most demanding game in the fucking world. Now, when you look at these three games, and I'll go over them, Resident Evil 4, Saints Row the Third, and Assassin's Creed 3, it highlights the biggest problem on the Switch with me. Now, Resident Evil 4 is a game that comes out on every console. If your console doesn't have fucking Resident Evil 4, or Skyrim for that instance, you're not a real console. When the fucking Zebo has a version of RE4 on it, yeah, it's not the most, you know, amazing version, but if it still has RE4 on it, yeah, it makes it a real console. If your system don't have RE4, I don't really count it as a real system, right? Let's be fucking real here. I mean, I think that's a general consensus of most people on the internet. RE4 is a goddamn venereal disease. It gets passed around all the time. Now, RE4 on the Switch is charged a premium price. It's a pretty expensive remake to get, a remaster or whatever, and it's one that doesn't even maintain 60 frames the entire time, which, yeah, I can actually feel that every odd and end a few times that I'm playing the game. It's the price you pay with PC gaming. You can feel that sensitive frame dipping. So it's not even 60 frames all the time, and it hits 1080p. It's fine. It's whatever. Um... But yeah, if it ain't hitting 60 frames the entire time, Capcom, what the fuck did you do? It also doesn't come with gyro controls, which is very important for Switch in my opinion, because those little thumbsticks, they don't lend well to an amazing uh, first person or shooting experience in general. Gyro controls help fill in that balance. It helps add the precision you need to be able to play some of these shooters on the Switch, in my opinion. I think that's a very important point to have. They didn't even include the motion sensing capabilities, which was an RE4 Wii edition, which they could totally have done on the Switch version of the game, because like many experiences have shown you, such as the World Ends With You Switch, you can actually get those motion controls on the Switch uh, through the Joy-Cons. They didn't do that, so you're charged a premium price by Capcom for a very lackluster port. Moving on, Saints Row the Third. It's not exactly my favorite Saints Row game. I love Saints Row 2 the most. I don't care much for 3 and 4, but you know what? Saints Row 3 is Saints Row 3. It was a pretty hot title for a while on PS3 360. I, I get it. Now, they released this game on the Switch, and it's quite literally the PS3 version. I don't even think it has any share or semblance from the PS4 or Xbox One remake? Remaster? Was it remastered? I think it was. Saints Row the Third, for something like Presidential Edition. Anyways, it wasn't even properly redone on the Switch, and it runs worse than the PS3 360. The frame rates are all over the place, and it 
completely shocks me because it's it's a game that's so old running on supposedly more powerful hardware to be honest and it runs like dog shit in comparison to its ps3 360 relationship then you got assassin's creed 3 and this is what's prompted me to make the video so recently i've been doing all the assassin's creed games over again in my own time and i just finished revelation so i was like you know i have a switch maybe i should try assassin's creed 3 on the switch so I try Assassin's Creed 3 on the Switch. Now, on the box, they write, oh, it's Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. Now, the remastered versions of the games have newer lighting, newer forms of rendering. They, they look like different games. And in some cases, I would say that for, you know, a slight few on and not things, they do look pretty different. And I, I, I somewhat prefer the lighting of the newer versions. Anyways. If you play the newer remastered versions and then you play the Switch remaster of Assassin's Creed 3, it's quite evident all Ubisoft did was take the original Assassin's Creed 3, we're talking the Wii U PS3 360 version, put that shit on the Switch, and it runs worse than those versions, dude. Connor's stuttering all over the place like he, like he has a problem. Whether you play it docked or undocked, the game runs like dog shit. That's the problem. It's a fucking PowerPoint presentation that you pay hundreds of dollars to get the console nearly the same, exactly the same price. Sometimes you pay more than the 360 uh, PS4 Xbox One versions and you get dog shit in, re in return. And Nintendo allows this. You know, I look at Nintendo's policies. They don't mandate the fact that some of these single player games need to entirely be on a cart. So then you go out to the store, you try to buy a game like Wolfenstein 2 on the Switch, and it's like, oh, well, well, well chapter one is available on the cart. Then you got to download the rest, meaning that fucking cart is pointless. You might as well just buy it digitally. Right now, you're buying a gimped physical disc of the fucking game. Uh, that's a problem. Nintendo really doesn't mandate the fact that there needs to be some quality control to this. So you have this myriad of ports on the Switch where I, Doom is, I guess, impressive. Dark Souls Remastered, you know, runs 30 frames, pretty locked. So that's kind of cool. And then you get shit like Assassin's Creed 3, which looks worse than the Wii U version. And it runs worse than the Wii U PS3 360 versions. So there's no mandating that goes on. There's no check by Nintendo that says, hey, if you're going to release a game for almost the same price as you would anywhere else, they can get the quality control, Switch gamers don't. And the thing that I have here is that when I go on YouTube, when I go on a lot of my forum websites to check how the community responds to it, and you see a lot of these Switch gamers who are apologetic, who are like, well, hey, it's a portable experience to play. You guys need some fucking higher standards. I'm just saying this right now because I care about gaming, because I care about the Switch. You, you need to have some higher standards in this. You cannot apologize or just use the excuse that, hey, I, I guess it's portable, so it's fine. Dude. The fact that the Switch doesn't have even GTA 5 on it, which can totally run on the Switch, right, is showing me how much Nintendo is trying to pull in that third-party support. Which, by the way, it's, it's slowly diminishing, in my opinion, on the Switch. Yeah, there are some cool first-party titles, but the more and more I look at third-party support, yeah, the indie games are nice and all, I'm seeing that slowly diminish away. Anyways, though, moving on forward with that whole point... When you have games in this quality release on the Switch, it's insulting to the it's insulting to the consumer because you pay the same amount of money. Just because you can get a game from the PS4, Xbox One that runs at 360p, which I believe is the resolution for some of these Switch games, at like 15 frames per second, doesn't excuse the you can't use the I guess it's portable excuse. You're playing literal shit. You're playing an unplayable version of the game, all right? 15 frames is not playable. 360p is not fucking... It's a smeary, Vaseline-filled PowerPoint presentation you're playing. So guess what? The whole portable argument doesn't actually even matter in that situation. But then you got apologists that defend it. And then moving on forward, Nintendo Switch Online might just be one of the most awful services that I might be paying for right now. And let me explain a few things. I don't like paying for online in general, okay? I think it's bullshit. I think it's a scam. I think Xbox Live, I think PlayStation Network, I think Nintendo Switch Online, you don't need to pay to play online, okay? PC gaming is at free online forever. Anytime anybody tried to monetize it, like Microsoft, it was shot in the foot. There is no reason for it. You're connecting peer-to-peer. -peer. There needs to be no involvement, no subscription feed paid. You're not getting any benefit. They're not, they're not hosting dedicated servers half the time for you anyways. Let's be real. But whatever. 
The thing with Nintendo Switch is there's this Nintendo Switch uh, online, you know, sort of game strip game uh, service that they have. And so far and so forth, the only thing I see is NES games. And I'm going to be honest with you, NES ain't the most exciting library in my opinion. I think the games haven't aged well for the most part. And there are a lot better things that Nintendo could be doing, like reintroduce their virtual console, which they haven't fucking done. The Nintendo Switch Online would be great if they gave us SNES first-party games like Super Metroid, like Earthbound, so on and so forth. Hell, even get Square Enix to say, hey, can we get Final Fantasy 3? Can we get 4? Can we get Chrono Trigger? Can we get a good stack of SNES games, even N64 games, on the Switch? Playing Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, original N64 prints on the Switch, docked mode with the Joy-Cons would be an amazing experience. It would add so many hours of play to the system. Are we getting it? No, we're not. I don't even think there's a proper time frame that we're getting on this situation with either. And when I speak to some of the Switch community members, and not all of them, there are definitely a lot of Switch gamers that point this shit out all the time. And kudos to you, because you're the kind of gamer that's making sure Nintendo stays on top and provides more quality product. But fuck all the apologists that just let this shit skate by. Look, now we're on to the point where we're getting PS3 360 games. That aren't even running how they used to. So you're paying full price. Dude, Assassin's Creed 3, the same version that I got for Switch, you could probably get for like five bucks used for the 360, for the PlayStation 3, that will run better, that will give you more than the version you're getting now. And the whole argument, well, at least I can play Assassin's Creed 3 portably, doesn't fucking stack up. If it runs like shit, if it looks like ass, then guess what? It really doesn't matter if you can play it portably. You're literally settling for a shittier experience just so you can play that game portably for what, a max of two and a half hours on the Switch's battery life? Like, come on, people, let's be real here. Let's be goddamn real. You know, there are good ports that come out for the Switch, like Final Fantasy XII is a great port. I've had no problem with that. But for the most part, I'm getting a lot of situ. which by the way, I shouldn't even be congratulating. FF12 is a PS2 game at this point, let's be real. But by the way, now we're getting game ports from a generation ago that aren't even running at the same point that they should be. And, and at which point I got to ask, is it really worth defending? Nintendo Switch needs to do a lot to really make up. I think first party games are great for it. I'm definitely excited for the new Pokemon game that's coming out. Maybe it'll bring me back to the franchise. I don't know. But um, moving on forward, Nintendo, I get it. It's an underpowered system. But you got to do something about third party quality control and upgrading your goddamn internet infrastructure and service because let's be real nintendo switch online in my opinion isn't really worth paying for it yeah i could play smash and all that stuff online sure for two or three games i don't really consider it that big of a deal but if you're going to give me a paid service at least give me some good some of those good rental games we got to move on from nes guys we got to move on from that the switch is a great system to have nintendo's nintendo's uh, virtual console library all the way up to even gamecube i would say in my opinion. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got to really say about the Switch. The community needs some standards, guys. You really do. And for a lot of people that call this shit out like I'm doing right now, kudos to you. You're the guys that are you're the guys and gals that are going to make the Switch an awesome system. But for now, the system needs some retooling, some rethinking. I hope with that new Switch Pro that's been leaked out, things get fixed up. But for now, things are looking kind of cut and dry for me. That's all I got to say, ladies and gentlemen. But I've got to get my peace out. That being said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. These videos, these rant times are made for discussion. So let me know in the comment section below how you feel about the Switch. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, because I kind of live for those comments anyways when it comes to these videos. And I got to get a point out in some way. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and I am out.